afternoon and welcome to Talk Yarny to Me. I am your host of Next Adventure. You can find me on Ravelry and Instagram under that handle, that name, that persona. Uh, my name is Amy, but you can call me Odd Nits or Amy. I don't care. You can call me Idiot. I don't mind. I answer to most things. You there being one. Um, it's been a while. I've been doing a few random vlogs um, since our last talk you are to me. Um, I've been loving them. I really enjoy making them. I'm not very good at the editing bit. Um, so bear with. We're learning. We're learning. Um, I feel like I need to reintroduce myself because it has been so long. Um, so, hello, um, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, bonsoir, hello, um, I don't think I meant, I think I meant bonjour, I haven't done Duolingo for ages, so, yeah, hi, I feel very awkward talking to myself, but we'll do this, we'll do this, it's fine. So where, where have I been? Why, like, why have I not podcast, you know? All 12 of you are dying to know, I know, and that's probably an exaggerated number. I must, I must talk to the masses. Um... I mean, honestly, honestly, if you watch my videos, I love you. Um, I don't want that to come across as, as rude. Um, but my general rule of thumb is if I've made one person smile today, I have achieved something. Because if I can bring you a little bit of happiness in this crazy, crazy world, then I, I feel good. Okay, so let's. So I will be silly, I will be stupid, and I'll say things I probably don't mean. But I'm just being daft in the hope to cause comic effect, really. Um, sometimes it goes down like a lead balloon, sometimes we can have a little chuckle. We'll see how it goes. Um, I'm drinking Lax and Chouchon for those who wish to know. Um, it's one of my favourite teas, probably my fave. Mm. If I was honest, I prefer an Earl Grey, but when I've been drinking a lot of Lapsang, going back to Earl Grey is weird. And then if I if I don't have Lapsang in the house, I crave it constantly. Um, first world problems. I know. So what have I been up to? Um, in 2019, I started a bakery apprenticeship, which was stretched out. Um, it was only meant to be 18 months, but I finished, ended up finishing it in January of 2022. So this year, January of this year, was when I was officially a qualified baker. Um, and I quit baking in May. That shows you what it's like to work in the industry. A lot of people are leaving, uh, I think, food production. I think over the pandemic it's it's changed a lot of us. Um, but I'm now on the shop side of it. So I'm still, still in the bakery, a different bakery, bakery that treats me like a human being. Um, and I'm on the shop side. And I can honestly say for the first time in two years, I am happy. I really honestly am. And that is an amazing feeling. It really is. And it's a feeling I didn't know I could have. <laughs> because they're gone. <laughs> I went places in the last, certainly in the last 12 months, I do not want to go again. <laughs> in my head it's been a really hard 
12 months. Um, and I can... I mean, two years I've been fairly miserable, but the last 12 months were the hardest. Um, we moved into this wonderful little cottage in February. I am so happy with it. It felt like home from the moment they handed us the keys. It felt like home. Like, you know, it would be two days in and people say, oh, are you settling in? Yes. Like, we were fully unpacked it, by the end of the first week. Talk Yarn to Me will be primarily about knitting. There'll be a little bit of crochet thrown in for good measure. There'll be a little bit of cross stitch. And there might be some quilting. There won't be any quilting today, so I can't be bothered to move the things that's on top of it. But hopefully... I will finish my Christmas quilt, which I started probably in 2017, 2018, something like that. So it does need finishing. So they're the things that we're going to talk about, and on a regular basis. Um, we can talk baking if you want. We can delve into that realm of the world. I baked a cake earlier today. I'm waiting for it to cool so I can ice it. I'm very excited about this fact that I baked a cake today because that's the first cake I've made for a while first cake I've got excited about making. It's a cake that I've thought about for a couple of days and all I want, the only thing I've like thought for the last two days is I really want to play with a piping bag. I should have made cupcakes, that would have worried that they would have been cool after the Iceland by now. Um, I made, I've made a chocolate fudge loaf cake and I've uh, got some chocolate icing to make. Which, in, which involves evaporated milk, people. I have not made icing that involves evaporated milk, so I'm very excited about that. And then... I'm going to ice it, and I've got sprinkles to throw in it. I've got chocolate buttons, and I've got uh, a Twix I'm going to cut up and throw at it. It's just going to be... As my, my rule is, I don't, I don't make pretty cakes, I make bollum and tasty cakes. If I may toot my own horn. Um, the little bit that I nibbled earlier. It was good, it was slightly warm though. So I'm a little bit biased because it was slightly warm. Um, it was good fun and I like the idea of a loaf cake. Where have the loaf cakes been my whole life? I've always made my, gin my ginger pumpkin cake. That is a loaf cake. Shall we finally talk knitting? It's been 10 minutes. Have I introduced myself enough? If you want to know more, I'm getting comfy. Um, if you want to know more, just ask. It's fine. Where should we start? Let's start with this one. This one has kind of had most of my attention lately. So this is a little bag I made myself quite a few years ago. It has polar bears wearing red hats and scarves on a red background. Make of that what you will. I got the fabric, I think, from like a knitting and stitching show way back. I think before I watched podcast, no, knitting podcast. Well, that was a while ago. Um, and the lining was... It's uh, cream fabric with red stars. just goes perfectly and actually I do quite like rolling it over and using it as a yarn bowl because it just looks cute if it's quite ah oh, it's like a little Christmas toadstool doesn't it it's beautiful um again if I may toot my own horn because I made this it's very wonky just, just look at the wonkiness of the zip like so you can see the wonk I, lo I love a bit of wonk best things in life are wonky honestly I love it. Um, it's got a little charm on it that was from Green Lampkin Charms. The Green Lampkin Fibre, even. She does charms and yarn. And it's got bells. And it's a uh, gingerbread snowflake. Because I'm a gingerbread man. Um, and these were socks that were meant to be knitted last year during December. And I'm just now knitting them. Because I was sad, so I didn't do much. 
Uh, and I've got some stitch markers that I've been using for, uh, in my heels. One's pineapple, one's ice cream. I think that was from Pearls and Jewels back in the day. She no longer makes um, stuff, but I have one finished up. And a who? What a way to start the podcast. We have a hoe, people. <laughs> I feel really daft. Do other people feel daft doing this? So it's being knit with this, which really does not do it any justice whatsoever. When it was in a skein, it was beautiful. But this is from Chromatic Yarns. It was from their advent calendar not last year but the year before it was the full skein that you got on christmas day or whenever you chose to open it and it is called lothlanders mold wine which i'm obsessed with i love mold wine and one of if not my favorite tea is a mold wine tea from the east sussex the kent and east sussex tea and coffee company very catchy name that. This is how it knits up, and it is beautiful. It is mulled wine. It is. It's quite autumnal, really, and wintry because it's cosy. It looks like cozying up by the fire. It's just oh, I love it. And I'm knitting the acorn socks, which is by a designer. But I still haven't found out what it is. I mentioned it in the blog, and they don't put their name on the pattern. So I'm just trying to remember to link it down below. Look. Are you seeing that yet? So that's the acorn socks. I print in black and white. Not because I'm cheap, because I pay um, HP 1.99 a month so that they send me ink whenever I need it. So it's not because I'm cheap, it's because well, that's just what I do. I don't need it in colour. Um, this, yeah, you have a slip stitch kind of detail that goes along the most of the sock. Um, the pattern is, I would say, is easy to do. I really don't know because uh, I just found out what, what the stitch pattern was and the stitch count for the top of the foot. And did my own sock up until we got to the cuff portion. <laughs> And then got very confused when I was trying to come back into pattern, having not been in it for the entirety of the sock. Um, but I'm sure it's a very good pattern. When you've made 9,000 million socks, you kind of know what you're doing. So I tend to do a Turkish cast on. I'm a toe up uh, knitter. And yeah, I tend to do the Turkish cast on, which I love. It's so easy. Um, and then, because even knit on. 2.25s but I think I've got a 72 stitch count for the simple reason because I'd normally do that on a two on a two mil I would do 72 stitches and then on 2.25 I'd normally do about 68 maybe 66 depending on what pattern is going on um, but because slip stitch tends to cinch in a little bit because I know this from experience because I've got some slip stitch socks that are tight on my feet and are a bit of a wiggle to get over the heel um so i decided to keep the stitch count at 72 because this is gonna limit the stretch a little bit uh my favorite heel is fish lips kiss i can't remember the last time i did a heel that was not fish lips kiss it it works for me doesn't work for everybody that's okay uh so yeah so then you get the top of the acorn detail here uh, which is a, again another kind of slip stitch detail you do a bit of a welt and then you do an interesting kind of rib it's quite a wide rib um, through the back loop and I believe I need to turn this in and I think you join it with that welt underneath so you should get a nice folded over cuff, like so. Um, it's a really interesting sock. I love it. I'm looking forward to doing that bit. I'm going to do that bit at the same time as I do the other one. So 
when I read the instructions I know what I'm doing. So that's that. So that's the first dog. My little GPM cozy is from Craftman Galore or Jazz Kitten Wendy. So there's the yarn. Here is the sock. That's where I was yesterday. I had a good, good run on it yesterday. Um, I think about two maybe two and a half inches away from putting in the heel uh, I think I've got my stitch count wrong so I had to had to add a few stitches in because why not uh, I'm knitting this on deep yeah deep ends which I think is my preferred sock method but I do enjoy magic loop it's a genuine hard choice I don't know and then my stitch marker that I've been using is a hot chocolate. I can't remember where this is from. It was Etsy. It's got all the trimmings. Um, because again, this was meant to be a Christmas sock. This was meant to be my December 1st cast on, then finish it by Christmas. Wear it Christmas Day socks. And um, we're in July, so we're doing really well. It's, it's sat in the bag, wound up. Needles, pattern, everything ready to go since about September. No, that's a lie. No, no, it, no, that is true because I, it was the year before, I got it a year before for Christmas. And I decided that it was going to be my December 1st cast on so that it would be my Christmas day socks. the one I haven't really touched next we're going to extreme so that is the one the socks I tend to work on because I'm kind of near I'm more than halfway let's put it that way I'm nearly three quarters of the way so next we have Harmus which is by Anna Johanna I'm saying that with a bit of a scandy needle I don't know if that is correct but it could be Anna Johanna which is kind of a really cool name, I'm slightly better. It's way better than mine. Um, let's just have a photo. It's a big slouchy. Oh, actually, it's not, it's cropped. It's more of a cropped slouchy jumper with a bit of brioche and a bit of seed stitch. Now, I have now just realised that two of my projects. Sea stitch base, but there's a big cow neck which I love. Um, I won't show too much of the pattern, but that's how it looks. And I'm knitting this. This is in a little treat that I got for myself, which was my celebrating getting a new job um, gift to myself. So Mrs. Brown's bag in the beetle juice. And it is the third of her bags that I own that's in the beetle juice colourway. But if you like something, why have anything else? That is from Gregory Life Diary of Nutcase. As you can see, I can wear it in about five minutes. <laughs> this is knit top down and flat, considering the cow like. I find that a bit peculiar, but I've been, I've got to be really careful because the yarn is so delicate. Yeah, I just ripped it. So I believe I'm like this, that's what I'm creating, I don't know. Um, the yarn does this a lot. It's very similar to Lopi, Le Le Lopi, the, the one that's like pencil roving. Um, a friend gave it to me, like I love it, I feel like that friend must hate me to give me such an annoying yarn, but it's, it's good fun and you do have to sit and wind off little balls to make it easier on yourself and my will cast on all my days, cast on, that's not fun, I can't remember, 
I've obviously lost the tag that went with it, so I've got, I really can't remember what it is. But it's like, I think it must be a pure wool. I don't think there's any nylon going on in there. But it is essentially like, you're sort of dealing with unspun yarn, it's just fluff. Um, and I'm hoping it's not going to be too see-through, it's seed stitch, so I'm hoping that gives it a little bit of, I probably will wear it with something underneath anyway. Um, and I, I was originally going for fun stitch markers and I thought no, that's going to catch and this is the sort of yarn you don't want it to catch. Um, I need to pick this up, it's been a, at least a week since I've worked on it and I really, really need to come back to it so I remember where I am and keep on top of it. But I've just... The next two things have actually kind of taken my attention away. So yes, yeah, so that yarn comes like this. I really want the finished project product. But it's just getting myself to do it. I feel like if I show you my last knitting, it's going to still show. But it feels... And contra flow to show the crochet before the knitting. Let's have some tea. Yeah, I show the piece of the resistance. And my final thing. Which I probably shouldn't have started until I was a bit further on that jumper, but never mind, I did it. If you're unaware, I am a big fan of a certain somebody called Mr. Stephen West. You might have heard of him. Uh, he's the bee's knees. He's my jam. So I'm working on Penguin, eh? which is a, a mild magic sweater last year in kind of pinks and purples and now we're doing a Penguin in blues and green. So I find an awful lot of his designs, I find a lot of them I just kind of go, Ugh. I don't think I would know how to wear that. And then on it, I'll be on Instagram and I'll come across someone who's done it and they've done it in like a, a, a tonal palette, like it's all blues or it's all the same yarn. And I just think, oh my God, that's beautiful. I mean, that's what it was. I saw a um, Mild Magic sweater, I think, in sort of oranges and yellows. And I just fell in love with it. And it made me appreciate the shape of it more. And I've made my own, which I'm not... I think I went a little bit too far Stephen West with it than I would have preferred. But that's okay, like I think I think it'll be fine with some nice like uh high waisted jeans, it will it will pop. Uh just need to get myself some high waisted jeans. But this is my penguino. It's all I want to work on. It's currently three strands. We've got two finger fingering weight strands and a mohair going on. Uh, <laughs> it's ooh. so it's this massive basket here. <laughs> I'm gonna be picking these up for days of green and blues. They are predominantly scraps. I've got this chunky here. I used on a hat with stripes with this blue. Um, this green I used in my cardigan, risen cardigan by Melanie Berg. This was a pair of socks, birthday socks even. This was a hat and mittens that I made. 
can't remember what the hat and mittens were. One of them was called Ferry in the Harbour Hat. This is some Jay Mushrooms and Smith from Shetland. When my friend went to Shetland, she brought them back from yarn and I made that with bright orange. I made some pumpkin mittens. I love them, they're brilliant. Um, this was left over from my colour craving shawl, which is also by Stephen West. This is Hedgehog or no, it's Lab Enemy. Given to me from a wonderful person who gave me that red yarn for that jumper actually. Uh, this is the first hand dyed yarn I bought in a yarn shop. So this is Life in the Long Grass in the Beach Hut colourway because I remember it so well because it was my first hand dyed yarn bought in the yarn shop that was bought at Yarn and Knitting, also known as Yak, in Brighton, which is just down the road from Gak Guitar and Keyboards. Uh, this, this also was given to me by my fabulous friend. Some Surrey alpaca from Ching Fibres, I believe is how you say it, which is beautiful. It's on the blue side, but now I think it looks green. It's weird. You put it next to the blues, it goes blue, and you put it next to the greens, and it goes green. But yeah, we've got some mohair in here, so I'm going to try and hold mohair double until I run out. Um, then I go. I can go into lace weight if need be. So that's the basket. And then what I'm trying to do throughout is hold my scraps of Stranded Dye Works Fright Night colourway, which I absolutely love and have it on every single base that he has dyed it on over the years. From the, from the very first dyeing of it, and I think I had a custom dye as well at one point, like just mad for it and I do have I made a cowl with it I think it was the first thing or second thing I made from it which I liked at the time but I don't really wear and so I'm probably going to unpick it once I run out of the stuff that I've already got but the jumper that I have in it I love and wear to death So yeah, so we're holding at the moment. I've already used that one scrap of mohair, which I'm quite pleased about, which was some drops alpaca fluff, I think. Um, so we're currently holding Stranded Dye Works Imperial colourway um, mohair, which you can't really see. It's a very minty, well it's called like Imperial because it's mint Imperial. Um, Fright Night, there you are, you see the speckles, and then this one is quite an interesting one, this is like that kind of zebra dyed yarn, I think it's called like zebra yarn, this was from, it's, it's something woolly, wild and, it's not wild and woolly, but it's something woolly. I must put the ball bounds inside it and then I can never remember what it is. I have to get it out and I can't get it back in. And I get sad that I can't get it back in. I stick a finger in there. Wonderful wool. I think they're based in Wales. 100% zebra sock yarn. Oh, it's 100% merino. I didn't realise that. It's gorgeous. It was one of those things where it came up on my uh, Etsy homepage. I fell in love with it. it was and ordered it instantly. I just think it's beautiful. It's turquoises and blues and purples. It's my jam. That is being held in my pink hazel bag, which I got from Edinburgh Yarn Festival in 2016. Which was the first and only time I went to Edinburgh Yarn Festival. I, I would happily go again. So. I'm loving the penguin by the way. I'm probably gonna work on that this evening because it's just fabulous. Now we move on to crochet. Which I love crochet. I went through a phase of only crocheting. I learned to knit first. I learned to knit when I was about nine. And then crochet I was about I was sixteen once I got the full like hang of it. 
and could just have a pattern of I think before then I could do a little bit as edging on like a knitted blanket or something but it was 16 where I learned how to kind of like treble or double for you Americans Uh, this is the second time I've made this blanket. I think it's, is it free? I can't remember, it might not be. But this is Compass by Button Nose Crochet from Ravelry. Um, it reminds me of the underneath of an extra. Which is the main reason why I love it. First one I did was during lockdown. I started crocheting blankets. I had loads of leftover baby yarn, and um, I was systematically working my way through it, through my yarns, so that when we moved, I'd have less to bring with us. And crochet blankets seemed to make sense. And also, oh, I made so I made so many like um, Attic Twenty Four ones. I think I think I did the Hydrangea. Marked on the beach comb, can't remember, or at least looked at that one, and then did a similar one. I, did, I think it's the meadow one, where you went forward one, back one. Loved that, I really enjoyed doing that one. That went quite quick. Um, it's the chevrony one, but it's got a, it's like a something chevron. I'm not to say wondering, but that's wrong. Anyway, I worked through all my yarns. But this is a Compass by Button Button Nose Crochet. It's so much fun. I love it. You get to this point, you know you need to skip. You get to this point, you know you need to um, popcorn. And you can just whee! It has a little owl stitch marker because I felt it was quite autumnal and then this will be like the next colour, this lovely deep red. Um, and I'm using this little owl from the corner of craft stitch markers to hold where I am and then I also put him, I'll put him here so that then when I next work on it I can see how much I did that time and then this is where I was last Thursday, this little ducky. I felt like the duck, the duck needs to be on it, so that's what I've done in a week. Um, I tend to work on this. Uh, I, I'll make myself a cup of mulled wine tea and then I go to bed and I sit and work on this and I watch a couple of YouTube vlogs, po knitting podcasts, and then I go to sleep. It tends to be the routine. I can get, at the moment, I can get about three rows done in the evening ish. Because uh, it's getting quite big now, it's quite a few stitches in the round. But it's just, it's so lovely to just work on and unwind from the day. So I'm using up scraps because I made a cardigan from this back in the day. Completely cabled from, from neck down to pasture hip it goes. Uh, the sleeves were plain. And it had a hood, had a moss stitch hood. I loved that thing. In fact, it's in the cupboard because it is so overstretched because it is Aaron and I wore it to death. It's a little bit fuzzy in places. But this is quite simply Serdar Hayfield Aaron in the, it's kind of 80% acrylic, 20% wool, I believe. Um, and I did it in the mustard colourway and this was left over from when I did that. And I loved it. And I also, I've recently made a, another chevron blanket uh, with it to try and use it up. It, it was mostly in, in this colour because I originally bought three balls of this. Might have been two. I think it was two balls of this to make my dad jumper. And I made the back and most of the front and then decided I didn't want to make it anymore. And I, I think I was making it too small. And the more I looked at it, the more I worried about it. So I'd look at it and then I'd put it away. And then I thought, do you know what? I'm not working on it. It sat there dormant. I unpicked it and I made a blanket with it that I probably will give to my dad instead that was mostly these two colours. So it's quite Gryffindor, but it did have the orange in, I think at the beginning and at the end. 
Um, so now we've got this, and then actually, people are texting me. This is how much orange I have left, which ooh, it's not very big. It's not very. I'm starting to wonder now. Maybe I did have enough for a final row, but the more that does feel very light. I don't think I would have done. So I paid a little bit of yarn chicken with that. That was fun. So now I'm on this, and when this goes. I do have more of that. I was thinking I might unpick the cardigan to then put into the blanket if need be. But I've still got it. And I don't know, because originally I was thinking, do this, then red, and then add the mustard again. So I'm thinking if I then use the cardigan yarn, the yellow is going to be huge, and then the red's probably going to be like one row by the time we get to it. But then that would be like the border, I suppose, you could argue. We'll see. We'll see where it's at when I get to the end of the yellow. I don't want, don't want it to be massive. I just want to be left with loads of leftovers again. I feel like the whole point of it is to use up the leftovers. So I want to use as much of that yarn as possible. So that's, that's my crochet. I'm really digging that, actually. What pattern is this? Oh, that's for the sock, that's why I'm going to fit in the bag. Hang around. So that's my knitting. I really need to go and pick up my cross stitch and then we can talk about that if you like. So this is a bag from Patchwork Paw Print on Etsy. I love their bags. I've got a few. I've got a few for my mum. She loves them too. And this. The masterpiece. I started this last year. My plan was to get it done by the end of spring and then work on summer over summer, winter over autumn over autumn, winter over winter. It didn't, didn't actually happen. But I'm so close. As you can see, this <laughs> main body of work is done and I'm currently working on the border. So I'm going round doing, I don't want to dip it in my tea, finishing off the little daffodils that are around the side and then once all the yellow is done I'm going to come along with green again and do these some little squiggles um, and then I also need to go in and add a few little details like the sheep need to have eyes, well one sheep does have eyes, oh you can't see it because the hoop's in the way, there he is, the sheep's have um, I'm not going to take it out of the hoop because my least favourite thing to do with cross stitch is moving the hoop around. It is genuinely something I try to avoid doing. Which is why I use a massive hoop. So I can fit as much in as possible. And so this is my little dove d designs I did by the, the four year kit. Um, so this is spring, this is what I'm working on, and it's so good, it's so much fun, I really love it. I love the little ducks and the ducklings, we've got sheep, we've got tulips, and it. I started this last year, back in 2021, spring of 2021, and I now live in a cottage which has a, a door number, but it also is called Tulip Cottage, so it's very apt to have some tulips going on. Um, I don't know what these are supposed to be. Are they violets? I'm not sure. There's even like a cherry blossom tree. And then you've got the weather and the brollies. It's beautiful. It has spring awakening with March, April and May. On it, and the dream is when they're all finished, have them framed and then have them up on the wall. And when we get to the end of May, I would then put the summer one on, and that would be June, July, and August. I think that's the dream. Whether or not we get there is another question. I haven't worked on this for a few days. I think I did Sunday, it was probably the last day, or was it Monday? No, it was Monday, so I'm watching it. I tend to cross stitch more when it's hot. 
because it's not like having a crochet blanket on me. It's not like having a, you know, it, I don't get like those sweaty hands like I do with knitting and like knitting a sock or whatever. But it's good fun. I've got a little noodle minder. I think this one is actually my most used one. Oh, sorry. And um, it's a little purple leaf and it was a freebie because I bought my mum some because my mum's a bigger cross stitcher than me. And it was buying interesting things for her cross stitch for Christmas one year that got me back into um, cross stitch. And that's one of the things that kind of got me into it was like, oh, I've got a needle minder. I need to have a cross stitch project to put it on. So yeah, I really like this. I really, really would like it to be finished because it's so damn close. Like I said, I'm more than halfway in my daffodils. I've only got the the top edge and a few down here. Yeah, to finish, and then I've got to have my little green squiggles that go around them. I've done my green squiggles at, at the top and bottom, so it's just the, the side squiggles. And the sh one of the sheep needs some curls. They, all the sheep need eyes. The ducks need eyes and wings. The little blackbirds need eyes and wings. And that's it. I think the rabbits are okay. Yeah, cause I, try I, I gave them French knots at one point and didn't like the way they looked. I remember that, so I took it off. Cause I feel like there's a little white cross within it that looks like a better eye than that, especially when it's going to be up on the wall. It doesn't need it, I don't think. Not you're just far too well bit if I see it, but... I love it, it's beautiful. I really need to finish it. Um... <laughs> I did set aside that Saturdays were going to be stitching days, but then I think this Saturday I sat and worked on Pengrono because I really wanted. I think I might even cast on Pengrono. <laughs> I just wanted to do it. It's been on my mind for so long. I just wanted to cast it on, and now I'm obsessed with it, and now it's the only thing I could ever think about. So, that is me. That's where I'm at. I will next do a podcast at the end of August. So this is what I've been working on in July. And at the end of August, we'll look at what I've been working on in August. I really, really would like my cross-stitch finished by the end of August. That would be fantastic. Maybe even the first few stitches on the summer one. That would be grand. Um, I'd like the definitely the yellow finished on my crochet blanket. If not the blanket finished, because let's face it, crochet is so quick. And that's only a couple of weeks' work. Mm, let's not make... Let's not set ourselves unachievable goals. So I think, yeah, that would be what I would like for next month, for next August. Would be that cross-stitch finish. That would be fantastic. I really, really would. Um, and then the blanket, definitely the yellow done. Definitely want all that yellow into it. Um, the sock, I definitely, the sock has to be finished by the end of August and a new one casts on, surely, you know, I'm only a couple of inches away from the heel. Oh, no excuse. And then the jumper. Where will I be on the jumper? Certainly in the round. I'm taking this as like a slow project because you really do have to knit slowly because the yarn just breaks apart. So it's quite a therapeutic process. Um, I keep trying, I keep writing on my weekly planner film night, Friday night, but I never actually sit down and watch a film, but I feel like that would benefit from a nice cosy film. I probably should have saved that jumper for Christmas time when I watch Christmas movies because that would be ideal, just a lovely kind of, poof. and like a cheesy Christmas film, one I've seen before so many times that we need to look at it, so I'm half engaged in my knitting, half engaged in the film it's kind of it's got that slow living vibe to it you know oh but that cow neck red jumper because it's so lightweight 
that would be ideal to garden in, wouldn't it? Maybe the sleeves not so much. I might actually knit the sleeves a bit tighter and perhaps a little bit shorter. I might not have enough yarn to complete the garment anyway, so a slightly cropped sleeve would be all right. But also, it would be so warm and lightweight that when I'm in the garden during the colder months, oh, oh, that would be lovely, wouldn't it? Oh, this is instilling a little bit of excitement in me for that project now. Um, so there we have it. I do have some projects that I need to weave the ends in on, and I might highlight them once I've done them. Um, speaking of which, behind me is my completely finished cosy memory blanket. Every single end has been woven in this bad boy. It can sit very comfortably on the top of a double bed with two people laying underneath it. It is rather fabulous. I am so happy with it. I loved working on this. Most of the squares were knitted whilst watching films and TV shows. It was my kind of TV film knitting. Um, particularly through lockdown, um, Sunday nights or Sunday afternoons, because I fall asleep. Um, so Sunday afternoons, uh, I think about two weeks into lockdown, I got Disney Plus and they sort of then added Marvel to the whole Disney Plus. So we started off watching The Simpsons every Sunday because I thought and that was the reason why I got Disney Plus at the time. I saw an advert that showed that it had all 30 seasons of The Simpsons and I thought if I'm being stuck at home, I'm being stuck at home with The Simpsons. Um... And then when I got to watch some of my favourite episodes, because I think, I think actually my favourite episode is the giant catfish one, which is never on the telly. They never show that one. I don't know why. That and um, Little Lisa Slurry, you don't get that often. They do play it, but not very often. I think they play it more now, probably because we um, associate more with the recycling element of it. But, um, but there's a few episodes that I'd forgotten... And a lot of them, a lot of the good ones, I didn't realise, like, I think season six was probably had a lot of, a lot of the ones that I, like, loved and remember and quote, um, um, so yeah, when it came to that, that was the thing that made me feel better, was every day I'd come home, we'd watch three or four episodes of The Simpsons, I would fall asleep, um, and then be woken up for dinner. Um, but also during that time Sundays were we would watch a Marvel film and we found a, a website that had the, the list of chronological in, in plot does that make sense? so in the in the timeline of, of the Marvel world not the order they came out in because obviously you, you get ones come out then the next one comes out, and 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 then it comes out, and it comes out, and then, you know, it all dumps around. So, we, yeah, we did that every week, watch something, and it was really nice. And most of that was spent knitting all my cosy memories. That was lovely. That's what I need again. I don't know why I can't seem to do it. Maybe, maybe that'll be a goal for August is to do Friday film night. Make myself watch, make myself sit down and watch something without thinking I should be doing something else. Allowing myself to do it guilt free. That would be quite cool. Right, I've been filming for an hour now, so this is going to be a pain to edit and a pain to upload. Um, so thank you so much for listening to me wittering on about the things that I love. That made me look like I was talking about myself. I meant knitting and colour and just beautiful, just ness. That's in my Mild Magic sweater. That's the key to summarise by using it. 
Just, oh, look at it all. Isn't it beautiful? I miss having a project like this to work on, actually. But my crochet blanket's not too dissimilar. It's just not scrappy. You have to think about the colour placement and stuff, which is... Yeah, you have to think about that. That is not a pretty face. Right, I have cold tea, a full bladder, and some unread texts to deal with. So, thank you so much for watching. Thank you for sharing a cup of tea or beverage with me. Hope you haven't been too boring. I hope I'm not just a, some more white noise in this quite saturated market of knitting podcast which is good it's good it means there's lots of people knitting out there there's lots of people wanting to share what they're doing and let's face it when you love something and something makes you so happy you want to share it don't you so thanks i'm gonna go ice a cake tidy up my mess try and force myself to work on a wedding the wed the wed jumper when we know to have well i'm gonna pick up penguino so thank you guys and i'll see you at the end of august if not before you, you want to drop into one of my vlogs that will hopefully there'll be a few <laughs> um i'm not filming one today and annoyingly that's a bit stupid because next thursday i've got to work um so i won't be able to film next thursday well I might do. Anyway, stop wishing Amy because you're at 59.54. Hello, goodbye. It's nice to see you.